in this tutorial we will discuss with you about the folate antagonists folic acid antagonists the folic acid synthesis inhibitors a single topic uh, discussed by different names in different textbooks anyway coming to the point in our today's discussion we are going to discuss with you guys uh, this particular topic in three very important points the point number one will be what is folate we'll know about the folate or the folic acid what folate is actually we'll know about this and uh, then we'll talk about the synthesis how this folate or this folic acid is actually synthesized and in the third point we'll talk about the mechanism of action of the folate antagonists folic acid antagonists or the folic acid synthesis inhibitors it means we we'll know the mechanism of action of the sulfonamides and trimethoprim in short so let's proceed our discussion from the very first point that is the folate what is actually the folate folate is also known as folic acid okay this is actually a cofactor that is responsible to synthesize purine and pyrimidines so without folate or folic acid the purines and pyrimidines won't be synthesized very simple now let's come to word the synthesis before we uh, get right into the discussion of the synthesis we must know this very important point that humans cannot synthesize and bacteria can synthesize so then humans are responsible to take this folic acid in diet whereas bacteria they will synthesize it internally and one very another important point that here we have a bacterium now this bacterium if it wants to synthesize the folic acid it cannot take the ingredients from the environment so you can say that folic acid cannot be synthesized by this bacteria from the external moieties so if a folic acid is available already in the environment that cannot cross the membrane of the bacteria so like this we can say that the bacterial membrane is actually impermeable to the folic acid that's why the bacteria is responsible the bacterium is responsible and the bacteria are responsible I'm telling you here by the singular and plural, okay? Anyway, come to the point. The bacteria are responsible to synthesize the folic acid inside, internally. Now let's come towards the point how the bacteria will synthesize this folic acid inside. Very simple. There are two biomolecules available inside the bacterium. If I'm talking about single bacteria, okay, here. Single bacterium, okay? We have bacteria and a singular is bacterium. Anyway, come to the discussion. These two particular molecules para amino benzoic acid and pteridine these are responsible the very initial molecules biomolecules now this para para amino benzoic acid will join will react with pteridine after they react by the help of an enzyme they will synthesize dihydroteroic acid then this dihydroteroic acid will be converted into dihydrofolate by means of another enzyme here and again this dihydrofolate which is also known as dihydrofolic acid this is supposed to be converted into tetrahydrofolate or tetrahydrofolic acid by means of another enzyme now this tetrahydrofolate or folic acid is available and it is free to do its job means this tetrahydrofolate or folic acid will come and it will start its function to synthesize purine and pyrimidine it will take part in the synthesis okay you can say so these are the cofactors now available to do the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines so like this the purines and pyrimidines synthesis is accomplished by this cofactor so this was the way how actually the folic acid is synthesized tetrahydrofolate or folic acid is synthesized how this was the way we got the concept now now another point is that uh, we must know about the enzymes also because our these sulfonamides and trimethoprim they are responsible to react on those particular enzymes the very first enzyme that is supposed to convert this para amino benzoic acid and pteridine into dihydroteroic acid now don't confuse yourselves regarding this particular enzymes or this singular enzyme just concentrate i'm going to make it very easy for you consider here dihydroteroic acid this name from this name you can remember this particular enzyme how like very simple now the enzyme is going to be dihydro Tyroid synthase. Very simple. Now this is dihydroteroic acid. This was synthesized by means of an enzyme. That enzyme is actually synthase enzyme. Just remember this one. Remember first para amino benzoic acid and pteridine. You must remember these two biomolecules. Then it is very easy for you to remember rest of the enzymes involved in the synthesis. 
of the folic acid. So the very first enzyme, you can remember this enzyme from this particular uh, product that is dihydroteroic acid. So dihydroteroic acid is synthesized by means of enzyme that is dihydroteroid synthase. Very simple. Now another enzyme here, guess the same enzyme again from this name. The next product, very simple. The product is dihydrofolate, which is also known as dihydrofolic acid. Now, what is the specific enzyme that is going to synthesize this? Again, it is synthesized, so the enzyme will be synthase. Which is synthase enzyme? Very simple. Guess from the name, dihydrofolate synthase. Very simple. So, this is the particular enzyme that is responsible to synthesize this dihydrofolate, yeah, dihydrofolic acid. Now, this is the next enzyme, the third enzyme, that is a, a bit tricky. So, just concentrate now. That's going to be easy again now. Simple. Now, here, dihydrofolate is going to be converted into tetrahydrofolate or tetrahydrofolic acid or simple folic acid. So, now, this particular enzyme, you must understand what is happening here. Then, is, then it's going to be very easy for you to remember the name. Now, here we have dihydrofolate. Means we have actually two hydrogen and that these are converted into tetrahydrofolate four hydrogen so now what happened here just the increase in the number of hydrogen now what is this particular mechanism called in chemistry just memorize your past regarding chemistry point of view in chemistry we got the concept that in reduction oxygen are removed in reduction and hydrogen it is going to be added so, in short, according to reduction point of view, reduction, removal of oxygen and addition of hydrogen is reduction. So, in biochemistry, we got the concept that any enzyme which is responsible to aid hydrogen in a particular molecule, in particular moieties, that particular enzyme is known as reductase. So, a very single point, reductase, you must remember this. Now, from this you are going to remember the complete name of the particular enzyme. Up till now, you just got the concept that what happened from dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate. Now, let's come towards the name of this particular enzyme, what that enzyme will be. Now, for this enzyme, you are supposed to concentrate this one, dihydrofolate. Why? Because reductase is actually an enzyme that is going to give you the idea about the very first thing. Just concentrate. Now, I'm going to make it easy, super easy now. The enzyme here will be dihydrofolate reductase now why we named this one according to this why the reason behind is very simple because uh, reductase is going to reduce this dihydrofolate and this is supposed to add the hydrogen into this after the hydrogens are added then that will be formed then tetrahydrofolate or folic acid is synthesized very simple the very first enzyme is dihydroteroid synthase the second is dihydro Folate synthase and third one is dihydrofolate reductase, which is going to reduce dihydro into tetrahydro. Means this is going to add hydrogen in short. Now let's come towards the second point, the last point, third point, in which we are supposed to talk about the sulfonamides and the trimethoprim. The mechanism of action of actually the folate or folic acid synthesis inhibitors. The very first one, sulfonamide. This particular medication is supposed to interact with the dihydroteroid synthase. This enzyme. Now, this will become substrate for this enzyme. Then, what will happen? Then, para amino benzoic acid won't interact with teridine means then dihydroteroic acid won't be synthesized why because now this enzyme is having interaction with this medication this is enzyme and this is a substrate now this complex will not allow to do the synthesis of the uh, dihydroteroic acid means in short you can say the folic acid synthesis is actually stopped then we have trimethoprim now this has got a very interesting site that is the dihydrofolate reductase now, suppose if uh, our bacteria have synthesized the dihydrofolate, it has reached up till this position. Now, here enzyme dihydrofolate reductase is going to interact with the dihydrofolate to synthesize tetrahydrofolate. So now, these trimethoprim will come and will interact with this enzyme. After their interaction, then the dihydro won't be converted into tetrahydro. You can say the folic acid won't be synthesized. So if the folic acid is not synthesized, then... It is a cofactor so if the cofactor is not available 
and the point is obvious, then our purines and paramarines won't be synthesized. Now here we come with another interesting point. That is very really simple. Sometimes uh, we indicate both medications in a single medicine. That is actually having a brand name that is Bactrim. Back trim. Now this contains both the sulfonamides and trimethoprim. So now if you want a synergistic effect for that, then we will indicate both the medications at once. So if you want to indicate at once, then you're supposed to take a medicine in which both are available. That is the back trim. For this, we have another name that is actually cotrimoxisol. So these will actually provide, if you indicate both at once, they will give you a synergistic effect. It means uh, effect in a very short time. So that's it from my side. I hope you got and if still you have confusion, drop that in the comment box. And regarding synergism, we have another video. Watch that also if you want extra and more information. Thank you.